Well, let's talk about resonance in the context of dampening. Resonance is when there's an external force driving the system or pumping the system. This external force is generally there to counteract damping. It's in pumping a swing. or in a kinetic sculpture, which is kept in motion by the repulsion between a permanent magnet and an electromagnet that's set up inside the sculpture with a coil of wire, a voltage source, a power supply, or a set of batteries, whereby current is set through the coil, creating opposite magnetic poles near the one in the magnet, which cause them to repel and swing back and forth as shown. The fact that damping means the motion is going to die down means that driving the system has to happen again and again and again. And that means the external force would tend to be periodic of a model that looks something like this. So here's our trusty differential equation. Chapter 3, the saga continues, the net force. Well, we've definitely got a driving force. This omega is no relation to any of the previous omegas that came before. We've got a damping force. As before, if motion weren't damped, we wouldn't need the driving force. And we've got the restoring force that's responsible for the periodic motion, the harmonic motion to begin with. And to this differential equation is left as an exercise to the advanced math student. I'm going to go by my favorite method of knowing what it is ahead of time and writing it down. This system goes nuts. I can't put it any simpler than that. It goes absolutely crazy. After some time, however, the system does settle down to a steady state motion. This is in no way simple harmonic motion. But notice the frequency of the driving force is going to be controlling the natural frequency of the system and in part. This is the amplitude of your new harmonic motion. You can see the acceleration provided by the driving force in the numerator. You can see the damping in the denominator as B gets greater. This interesting amplitude is going to get smaller. And you can get C this which is where the resonance is going to come from. And naught is the square root of the equivalent k over m, aka the natural frequency of the system. In big picture, the amplitude is smaller. When b is small, the amplitude is larger. And when b is zero, the amplitude is the largest possible. About omega, what happens when omega the driving frequency gets very, very close to omega naught, the natural frequency of the system. Well, to streamline that into English, what happens when you pump as close as possible to the natural frequency of the system without the benefit of damping? Check it out. We've got a graph here showing different values of B compared to the ratio omega to uh, omega naught, namely, how many times off is omega, the input frequency, from omega naught, the natural frequency? And you can see that as the damping gets smaller and smaller, the amplitude gets bigger and bigger until that one point where omega actually equals omega naught, where the amplitude has the potential to be literally infinite. The system is going to go crazy. The amplitude is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger until it shakes itself to pieces. This is what we call resonance. Of course, this kind of wholesale destruction, as you saw in the aerostatic flutter around the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, is only possible when there isn't sufficient damping. If you have any damping of any kind, some kind of damping, like some kind of friction anywhere, ever, three-dimensional, fluid drag, air drag, one-dimensional, tabletop friction in order to prevent us from shaking ourselves to bits or developing a bad case of aerostatic flutter. However, 
there is one thing we should look at if we actually want the system to resonate. That is, we want the harmonic motion to grow instead. Note that the velocity is the first derivative of the position in the same derivative of the position, and pumping the system is not going to go very well unless your force, which you're pumping at some input omega t, and we can say as usual that theta equals omega t, is also in the same direction as your motion. If you're moving in the x direction, you're pumping in the y direction, that's not going to do very much. Now, let's point out that power here is, as first semester mechanics tells us, the dot product of the force and the velocity. Now, we've got change in position over time. Um, we said position was cosine. First derivative of that is going to be in the sine family. Compare our options. Force and velocity are either in phase or they're out of phase. If they're in phase, we're going to have sine squared. If they're out of phase, we're going to have some kind of sine and cosine combination. Let's start with the obvious. If it's negative, that's bad. If that's positive, that's good. Now, graph on your calculator sine squared compared to sine times cosine and see which on the whole is bigger. Press play when you're ready to contribute and check the results. Ready? Sine squared, bigger every time. That means if we want harmonic motion here, we want the kind of system where the velocity is coming in as a sine from a negative cosine, and the input force is also coming in as a sine directly. Say what? We are in phase. That is, when you're pumping in time with the swing motion, your power will be at its maximum. As you can see, not just the swing, but the whole swing set is starting to resonate with the driving force. And this is why we have anchors.